it is an honor and privilege to be part of this project called Thought Leadership at the University of the Philippines, a multimedia oral history. Its objective, as the program concept says, is to capture, preserve, and share as detailed the history of the university's service to the public from the individual experiences of distinguished men and women for the benefit of the current and future generation of UP constituents. For the benefit of the public, the University of the Philippines, as described in Republic Act 9500, is, quote, the National University, a public and secular institution of higher learning and a community of scholars dedicated to the search for the truth and knowledge as well as the development of future leaders." Unquote. I feel humbled to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with a foremost UP alumna whose professional career spanned more than 60 years since she graduated from the portals of her and our alma mater in the early 50s. The capstone of her career was her being declared national scientist for her outstanding contributions in the field of demography, highest honor which the Philippine government can bestow for one's outstanding contributions to science and technology. I was privileged to witness her conferment held in Malacanang during the term of her president, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, to this day at this age 91. I work with her in population and development, including family planning advocacy through the Commission on Population and other relevant NGOs with similar objectives. In fact, she is one of the eminent persons of the Forum for Family Planning and Development, an NGO I am the pre of which I am the president. This famous lady, an icon and a legend, is no other than MS. Mercedes B. Concepcion, PhD. Let me start by inform, uh, informing us of her family, ma'am. Uh, your background, and uh, if you were uh, to enumerate your parents as well as siblings, and you may want to uh, state whether all or some of them are also alumni of the University of the Philippines. Um, I am a product of uh, all UP graduates. My father was a per, uh, from the College of Medicine. My oldest sister was a graduate of chemistry. Uh, my second sister is a dentist and a graduate of the College of Dentistry. And my brothers all started in um, Ateneo, but then proceeded to uh, UP1 to uh, do business administration and the other one, College of Law. My, uh, Ma'am, my congratulations to you because you are all products of our uh, University of the Philippines. And uh, I know that uh, the, I'm sure the University of the Philippines, uh, as, uh, Philippines Association um, may, uh, must have bestowed uh, on you awards because of uh, all of your uh, families have come from UP. Well, actually, um, I think the culture uh, I grew up in was one uh, that was uh, in academe. Uh, my father was a very strict professor and was the um, was feared by uh, his students in the College of Medicine. Uh, in fact, my oldest sister wanted to become a, a, a doctor, but then she wanted to duck the class. And my father, who was looking at her, said, well, I, she, you might duck the class, but you will also be one of those who uh, I will enter in the cemetery because she was trying to be very hard. So she went to chemistry instead. Uh, when my turn came at the university, I uh, wanted to do 
uh, something in um, journalism. But my father said, journalism, you don't need to study that. All you have to do is work as a journalist uh, and work in newspapers. Uh, so he made me take up a general course. And where I excelled, that was, he decided, would be where I would do my uh, undergraduate. And it turned out that I did chemistry and got a one, and he said, that's it, you will go into chemistry. So I, I finished chemistry but never practiced it because the following year I uh, went into um, biostatistics in, uh, at the University of Sydney, uh, and after that I had a training in demography uh, in the sociology department of the University of Chicago. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, if I may, uh, let me just categorize uh, your achievements as a UP alumna. Uh, one is in government, and the other one is the international community, such as the United Nations. Uh, um, actually, um, I was not a um, scholar. Uh, my first year, I was, uh, since I graduated uh, with honors, I was a enter entrance scholar, but I did not keep up uh, uh, my grades, and so uh, uh, I paid tuition and matriculation fees for throughout my four years in uh, the university. You had your PhD in the University of Chicago, mm -hmm. and when you came back you became a professor of demography, the first lady demographer in the Philippines. Can well, you? Well, actually, even before I did my degree in uh, demography at the University of Chicago, I was already working oh. uh, in the UP uh, in the Statistical Center, which was then a United Nations training center in statistics. It later was absorbed um, in the university and became what is now the UP Statistical Institute of Statistics. But it went through UP Statistical Center. Uh, uh, I was uh, given a fellowship by the Population Council of New York to take up advanced courses in demography. But when I reached Chicago, the chairman of the Department of Sociology said, I know the culture of UP. There is no point in your just taking advanced courses because you will be nothing when you get back there. All they look at are degrees. So you will better take up a um, PhD. Uh, and so, I enrolled in the graduate program of demography at the University of Chicago and uh, did my uh, academic courses. And in 1963, I was recalled by then acting president Enrique Pirata to come back uh, and do my dissertation here because the UN demographic advisor was returning to Australia and somebody had to take her place. So that was what happened. I did my PhD in absentia and <laughs> graduated in 1963. Uh, I did not along with Dr. Felipe Hocano. Uh, I, uh, we both earned our PhDs in absentia in 1963. Uh, Ma'am, uh, how did uh, UPPI become, uh, uh, I mean, the, the establishment of UPPI? Actually, in, the... uh, in 1958, the Ford Foundation uh, organized a group of three people to look around Southeast Asia with the goal of establishing population research and training centers 
in some of the countries in this region. So they went to Japan, they went to Thailand, they came to the Philippines, they went to Indonesia. And the result was that uh, Japan already had a Ministry of Health and a um, population um, program, so they did not need to organize one there, uh, only a strengthening of the program. Uh, so in Thailand, uh, the Demographic uh, Institute was set up, the uh, UP Population Institute was established here, and in Indonesia, the, uh, the same was established in Jakarta. So these three are now the leading uh, institutes in the Southeast Asia as set up by the Ford Foundation. I see. Um, it means that um, as a pioneer in, in, the, in demography, you were able to uh, instill the discipline of demography in the University of the Philippines. I, 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 I think it's now part and parcel of the curriculum and the College of Arts and Sciences, Actually, right? I was very uh, fortunate because Dr. Virata was very interested in population studies. Mm -hmm. So he was very receptive to the idea of establishing a population institute in the university. Uh, and since I was the first who had that degree from a foreign university, I was it. So then followed Elvira Mendoza, Mrs. Pascual, who had a master's degree from Chicago, also in demography. So the two of us constituted the faculty of the uh, new uh, population institute. Um, up to now, the UP Population Institute is still within our uh, university. And do you have uh, about trained and produced uh, students who have graduated from either PhD or MA degrees? Actually, the institute does not offer PhDs, only a master yes. program. Uh, one in demography and another in population studies. Uh, the PhDs are all trained abroad. abroad yes. uh, but uh, I was, uh, as I said, fortunate that uh, those who followed after me uh, and became the directors of the Population Institute have all been trained abroad. Now, um, program, the teaching program of demography is now incorporated in the CSSP or the College of Social Sciences and Philosophy, while the research on population and population studies is embedded in the Population Institute. So there are two, one academic and the other research. I see. Um... I'm very sure that uh, the, the, your research on population studies uh, must have been uh, so valuable that uh, there are already policies or laws that have been enacted uh, by the, uh, by the um, Congress again, of the Philippines. As I said, I was fortunate that my um, dissertation dealt with fertility, which then occupied uh, uh, the... Um, what you call this, the, the, the government who was uh, uh, concerned with the high rate of population growth of the Philippines. And it was also pointed out by the United Nations that we were one of the countries with high rates of population growth. Uh, so uh, that started the, um, the research program which up to now uh, is still ongoing. And in fact, uh, uh, later this month, uh, the UPPI will have a data dissemination forum on the results of the first national 
migration survey. Oh, that's, a, that's great. Huh? Mm. Uh, if I may uh, state that um, I know uh, the, your, the faculty members have graduated from abroad, Dr. Corazon Rimundo, who became the UP uh, director later on, and now was a passing city councillor, also became an academic uh, vice president. The late Dr. Lita Domingo, the late Aurora Perez, uh, of course, or the late Jose Cabigod, no? These are all your, uh, mm -hmm. all your, your product, no? And um, who else? Uh, I think, um, well, Grace Cruz and uh, the others. The, yes, right. So, uh, Actually, they are all over, and they have contributed a lot to uh, research in population studies. In fact, uh, the Commission on Population have engaged them in uh, in research as well as they become part. Uh, be, they become consultants to the Commission and other universities. Ma'am, um, you see, there are two universities, one in the south and one in Mindanao. Uh, Father Flieger of San Carlos University and Father Francis Madigan. It seems as if they have followed your steps uh, in, in uh, creating their own population st uh, studies or population institute. Actually, uh, Father Flieger and SVT, uh, a German, was uh, identified by Dr. Hauser, the chairman of the Department of Sociology at Chicago, to take up demography. So he followed my footsteps oh. and then set up the Office of Population Studies at, uh, in Cebu at uh, the University of San Carlos. Father Madigan, uh, a Jesuit who was doing research on Mindanao culture, was also involved in sociological studies and one of these was in terms of population growth so his um, research institute of mindanao culture became the second uh, institution uh, that was allied with us in undertaking research so whenever we had a national study the two the Office of Population Studies at the University of San Carlos and the Research in the Mindanao Culture Institute at uh, Xavier were always involved. So they did the Visayas for the University of San Carlos and Mindanao for the uh, Xavier University. Yeah. I, I, I do remember very well, ma'am, because uh, these three universities were uh, uh, involved in the Commission on Populations uh, Research Studies. Uh, and of course, you were the lead uh, then uh, in ensuring that uh, somehow this, the population research uh, would be able to be disseminated for the consumption of the, of the public. Now, may I go back to the, uh, to the University of the Philippines as our, uh, as our alma mater? Uh, how uh, how do you describe uh, the uh, the uh, connection between UPPI and the international community? Meaning, you know, uh, they, they they recognize the internationally the uh, the uh, contribution of UPPI globally in in a sense. Actually, uh, it was Rafael Salas who became the director of the uh, of UN Population Fund, who was responsible in um, naming the Population Institute as the organization that yeah. will undertake studies in population. When he came back from his first um, for, uh, I think, uh, he went to the uh, first uh, meeting, of, his first meeting of the UN General Assembly, and there he realized that the Philippines was missing the boat in terms of funds that went to population because there was nothing ongoing here. 
So he came back and uh, came to the Population Institute and told us to set up a study committee to, to be able to um, recommend to then President Marcos a population program. Actually, it was a family planning program. And so uh, we set up a um, multi-disciplinary uh, uh, commission uh, which involved the church, the uh, academe, and all the, the uh, different um, government departments who were involved in population to study the problem. And the result to us that in 1951, uh, not 51, 61, uh, we recommended that the President Marcos espouse a program on population studies. And, and he did. So that was the start. And from then on, uh, that's still ongoing now that the Population Institute is the uh, institution that takes care of studying the population in all its facets. And that's, that's correct, Noah, because uh, I still have to see the Commission on Population engaging other um, uni excuse me, universities in population research uh, studies. But uh, let, uh, can you say that um, it was the, uh, the tenure of uh, the late Rafael M. Salas as Actually, an as a uh, se executive secretary of then uh, President uh, Marcos. The PAPCOM yes, called creating was PAPCOM. one of the recommendations oh, that emanated from this study, this study yeah. uh, that we set up a population program uh, with uh, involving many of the um, government departments to take up all those uh, aspects of population under their organization, which had to do with demography. And so uh, we had the beginnings of what is now the Population Commission or PAPCOM. Yeah. You, did, uh, you did help uh, draft the first executive order. Is that correct, ma'am? Yes. Actually, it was uh, Mr. Salas who asked us to draft the terms of reference of the PAPCOM so that um, we could recommend that to uh, Ferdinand Marcos when he set up the program. Um, um, to this day, the Commission on Population uh, owes a lot, debt of gratitude to you. And that to this day, they come and enlist your counsel and advice. Uh, uh, of course, we are deeply grateful for that. And I hope that you will continue uh, doing this kind of mentoring and uh, providing the counsel providing counsel to, to the Commission. Actually, uh, we were at also, I think, very fortunate that um, in the recommendation, the Institute was the only uh, non-government uh, uh, organization involved in the PAPCOM. Yes. Uh, but uh, who all, all its um, studies were accepted and acted upon by the government. This is all the University of the Philippines, mm -hmm. right? Ma'am, uh, now let's, uh, let's go to the second uh, category of your achievements. Um, in the global community, meaning the United Nations, uh, um, you see uh, the name of Mercedes Concepcion is a byword in the corridors of the United Nations, particularly the UN Population Division and the UN Population Fund. Please describe, you know, what you, uh, what you have done and uh, why all these accolades for you. Um, it was uh, 
President Salvador Lopez, UP President Salvador Lopez, who was responsible for recommending that the Population Institute director be the Philippine representative to the UN yes. Population Commission. And so, our introduction to the international realm started from that. And that was what, 1964. 64. Uh. So from then on, uh, we played a role uh, not only in, uh, in uh, attending the sessions of the Population Commission, but in working out the program of research that the UN Population Commission uh, was undertaking on behalf of the United Nations. So we had an in right there. And I think that uh, my um, presence in the UN Population Commission, uh, which started in 1967 uh, and continued for uh, many years, uh, was responsible for the work program of the United Nations in population. Uh, being, I think, a woman, a demographer from a uh, underdeveloped country and a Catholic yeah. gave me many uh, perks and <laughs> and uh, I was always considered whenever there was something to do with population because first of all a female a Catholic and so forth and that also led to my appointment at the Vatican's yes. uh, Commission on Natality we studied the population problem. Yes, um, in fact, uh, you are one of the two Asians uh, who were appointed as members of the yes, uh, Birth uh, Control Commission. Two, two Asians and two women of, from underdeveloped countries who were appointed members of this commission, one from India and the other from the Philippines. Yeah, so it, it really means you have that distinction because uh, all the rest of the commission members either came from, from Europe, from Latin America, and from, uh, from the yeah. United, yeah. United States. Um, uh, maybe you may w wish to tell, to tell us the results of the study Which? of the Birth Control Commission in ah. the Vatican. Actually... Um, the study, the Papal Commission recommended the use of contraception. But the influence of some of the diehard members, including a Jesuit, an American <laughs> Jesuit, who influenced the, co the contrary recommendation. So our recommendation, which was the majority, was uh, ignored by Pope Paul VI. Um, six, six, yeah. uh, and, um, and he only looked at the uh, study, the research that has to be undertaken. So natalo kami doon. But uh, having said that, uh at least uh, the, uh, the, uh, the study showed to the international community that uh, uh, concept, contraception can be promoted for as long mm -hmm. as it's not abortifacient, for as long as uh, it's the choice of the couples uh, in terms of uh, family planning. Mm. Actually, um, what was accepted then was REFEM the practice of real them as a con in terms of contraception. But uh, the majority opinion 
which uh, was in the report was glossed over because of this influence of the five uh, strong members who were conventional and uh, who wanted not to rock the boat. Mom, uh, I have one last question, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, what words of wisdom should you impart on our millennials uh, who are our present emerging and succession, uh, succeeding generations? I think that um, what I would like to emphasize here is that if our belief is that we need to do something uh, about the population program and uh, growth of the Philippines, that we should not be uh, afraid of acting on that. And I think that um, I have on my side uh, the National Economic and Development Authority uh, whose uh, director general is uh, a uh, w one well known in terms of his espousal of population and its uh, development. You know, there's no doubt that uh, socio-economic planning secretary uh, Ernesto Perna is the number one uh, exponent and advocate of uh, population and family planning. And uh, because of his example, the Commission on Population has uh, become more aggressive and really wanted to ensure that we have a quality of life for the uh, future yeah. generations. And uh, now I think that the PAPCOM is um, assuming a major role yes. in fact uh, its director is now an undersecretary. Yes, correct. That's uh, the first time that uh, the director has been elevated to, to such a rank. Uh, I hope that the present uh, undersecretary, Dr. J.P. Perez, will be able to have the su full support of all the members of the commission. I, uh, I, I believe so, ma'am, uh, because I'm part and parcel of uh, uh, the Commission on Population, and I can see the commitment of uh, Undersecretary Perez with the guidance of the chair, uh, Secretary uh, Perna. Uh, what do you think is your legacy in the field of demography? Uh, my legacy? Yes. Well, uh, I think that when I think of the students and the graduates of the UP uh, Population Institute, uh, which is now in its, what you call it, third generation, uh, I, uh, I feel very proud because I think that in spite of the limited number, they are doing what should be done up to now. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for uh, sharing these thoughts that would inspire all of us, particularly our present and future University of the Philippines students. These are all most worthy of emulation. Congratulations. Thank you.